Hello again, everybody. Barry Hyatt here in Scottsville at the UK Extension Office with my good friend Janet Johnson. Janet, today I think we're going to be talking a little bit about a breakfast item that most of us like, but you're going to add a really nice fruit to it as well, aren't you? Absolutely, Barry. You know, one of the great things about spring is that you often have a Mother's Day brunch, mm -hmm. you have graduations, mm -hmm. you have all kinds of activities that right. happen, happen, actually begin the end of April through the, maybe the first of June. Mm -hmm. And so it's nice to think about some events that maybe you could have a quasi breakfast dish or a dessert, depending right. on how you do it. Right. And a French toast is something to consider. Mm -hmm. Now, most French toast recipes are very heavy on eggs. Lots Lots of eggs because mm -hmm. you dip your French bread, you actually let them soak. And so people that have a little bit of a cholesterol issue sometimes have to avoid that dish. Mm -hmm. But we're going to offer a, an alternative that we think you're really going to like. And uh, it's a little heavier on egg white, but it mm -hmm. uses a lot of the same premises, but adds some great fruit. And here we go to those berry patches of northern Tennessee <laughs> that are so good right now. Oh, yes. And we're going to give it, give it a whirl here. So we'll have a little bit of a noisy thing. We're going to get it in there and then show you one that we've just pulled out of the oven. As long as I don't have to operate this thing, we're good to go. Okay? <laughs> well, we will do it, Barry. It's really simple. <laughs> and, you know, I want people to, to really understand that you can use any kind of French bread that you want. You mm -hmm. can get a larger loaf and use half of it. Mm -hmm. you, it's basically 12 ounces, and then you cube it. Okay. And this is something you can do ahead of time. And just put it in a resealable bag like mm -hmm. we've done here. Mix, right. the, you know, I actually cut some of this up last night, okay. some of it today, mm -hmm. and just I took it, taken it out of the, fr the refrigerator at this point, and we'll be ready to add it to the egg mixture. But Fantastic. what we want to do is try to create a little bit of a thickening agent, and I've got a fourth a cup of regular flour, plain mm -hmm. flour, and a fourth a cup of whole wheat flour. Okay. Again, that gives a little bit more fiber and a little bit of a healthier option right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So not a lot, but like that. So we're going to kind of put those you know in a large mixing bowl at this point okay. then we're simply going to come back and create this mixture now I have went ahead and preheated the oven to 400 degrees at this point and I went ahead and generously did some buttering, buttering or you know to yep. a 9 by 13 dish and okay. I have that ready to go and now we're going to take and add a lot of ingredients to the flours now it, I would go ahead and kind of mix these flowers just a little bit berry. And after we blended the flowers just a little bit berry, then we're going to add one and a half cups of skim milk. Now, if you want a richer recipe, you can use a 1% or 2% okay. if you'd like to have that. But mm -hmm. there's really not a lot of need here to do mm -hmm. that. Now, in order to really kind of get these flowers going and get them blended, I'm going to add just a little bit of the milk and just kind of stir just a little. That begins to mix the flowers with some liquid. Otherwise, what you get into, if you dump everything in together, you've got little lumps of flour and it just takes longer on a mixer. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I'm doing this one little thing right here to kind of get dry ingredients started at least so that we uh, hopefully do not have to listen to the mixer as long, <laughs> you know, like that. Then we're going to add the rest of the milk, of course, and we're just going to kind of dump everything together. Okay, so we're just going to so get got that. The milk going there. We do, and we'll be able to kind of blend this up here in just a moment. Then we're going to be adding nine eggs. Wow. Now that's the French toast part. Mm -hmm. Only we're going to do three whole eggs, mm -hmm. and we're going to do six egg whites. Okay. So that will give us the puffiness of a rich French toast that we look at and uh, these are things that you can go ahead and maybe do in the morning or do it at another time and have those in the refrigerator if you need to. So we've got all of that going. Then we're going to measure in only a tablespoon of sugar. And this is where a lot of recipes will add quite a bit of sugar, but we're only going to use a tablespoon because we're going to use those grapefruits mm -hmm. and do that. And then we're going to add a half a teaspoon of salt and a fourth a teaspoon of vanilla. Okay. Okay. And uh, let's do, I think I'm going to reverse that. I think I'm going to put a little more vanilla, more vanilla? and okay. lower the salt. That'll work. Now, Barry, I'm using a pure vanilla simply for the flavor. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will use an imitation vanilla flavoring, and mm -hmm. that's okay. Mm -hmm. But the pure vanilla has a much more pungent mm -hmm. flavor. So very sweet. Oh, very, yeah. very sweet. So that's why for this recipe, we're really going to kick it up there. And it's, it's very, very nice. It's worth the extra money to have a little of that on hand mm -hmm. to be able to use in a recipe like sure. this. So that's great. So you've, you've got that. And now we are ready to create a dipping batter. 
So here we go with a little noise. So bear with, with us. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Only until blended. Yeah. And smooth. <laughs> It wasn't very long, was it? It's not. So you can see you can cut your thyme by adding mm -hmm. just a little bit of liquid to your flowers, and it's nice and smooth and nice right. and blended like right. that. Sure. And take that little extra step out. So we've added all these things. So now what we're going to do, Barry, I'm going to let you get our French toast cubes, cubes. Okay? okay? And now we're going to add the cubes okay. to our mixture. Yes, we are. We're going to stir in these bread cubes. Just drop them in. Mm -hmm. okay. Sure. Very good. Nice bread cube both, handling both technique bags. there, Barry. Yes. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of stir one bag. Okay. You take your French bread and kind of cut these in one inch cubes, maybe a little bigger. It's not always easy mm -hmm. to get one exact inch, so we'll right. add a few more here. The larger cubes tend to hold their shape in your recipe more, otherwise they'll kind of disintegrate a little bit and become more like crumbs. And you know, want the whole bag? Or? Yes. Okay. We're going to use the whole bag okay. because that we're going to fill a 9 by 13 dish, and we can do that. Again, you're talking about 12 ounces that you purchase. When I went to get French bread at Food Line, uh, they had exactly 12 ounces. It was two small loaves, okay. but I ended up getting a better buy by getting the 15 ounce loaf, and I can just have the other French bread at another time. At another time, sure. That's right. So you okay. can see it, it takes about a quart bag full of cubes mm -hmm. filled to capacity for storage, and that gives you a good idea of what you're doing. You're just wanting to coat and get this ready. And you need a pretty big um, prep bowl, I you guess you do. Would call it. Notice what again, I'm using a large, deep bowl for mm -hmm. all of this to yes. handle the bulk, not right. so much, you know, what it's going to go down to, but just handling the bulk to coat this. Mm -hmm. Now, this may be reminiscent to some people of Christmas casseroles mm -hmm. that are often made ahead mm -hmm. of time, and the bread soaks, right. and it's very similar to that. Okay. It is a make-ahead dish that you can do ahead a minimum of one hour, but no more than 24 hours. You don't okay. want to you don't want to go too long, you know, right. or, or it will mush up like okay. that. Okay. So actually, uh, the dish I'm going to show you, I actually did this morning about mm -hmm. uh, probably nine o'clock. I assembled okay. it okay. and got it ready and put it in the refrigerator. So it was in about uh, five hours, I okay. guess. Okay, very good. You know, like that. Okay, so we are now ready to pour our bread mixture in a 9 by 13 dish mm -hmm. that we've greased and we want to get all of our mixture out and we're just going to kind of spread that and you can see how those bread crumbs it looks like a lot doesn't it mm -hmm. a lot it of does. bread cubes it certainly does. but it really kind of fills the dish well and uh, is really not as much as it looks like sometimes. And then I've taken three ounces of fat-free cream cheese. Mm -hmm. Now I'll have to admit, at our local grocery, I could not find fat-free cream cheese, so I used a third less fat okay. cream cheese. So just kind of depends. And I'm just going to arrange those on there. Um, sometimes I've found with this recipe that the cream cheese is going to melt more, and sometimes it's going to create a nice little pocket Okay. of cream cheese in the mm -hmm. recipe. So it depends on, you know, when it comes out of the refrigerator after right. you've had it in, kind of how cold everything is and just depends. But it's okay. It's going to be fine. So just, <laughs> just arrange those and put those on. And now one of the crowning touches, and this, these are your favorite berries. Yes, yes. You can use strawberries, which mm -hmm. will be in season soon, but mm -hmm. blueberries as well. And this is just a wonderful blueberry bake. The recipe will call for one cup. Now, if you want to get happy, I do too. <laughs> Live large, as they Live say, Live right? large with this recipe. I think the berrier, the better with this. With that, yeah. And this is where it's a nice blend if you did strawberries and blueberries on, on mm -hmm. this recipe. Sure, sure. So you can blend nice fruits and create this. And you can see it fills up a lot of blueberry. Just mm -hmm. put those in your pockets. And for a crowning touch, we're going to sprinkle some slivered almonds. Oh cool. Yes, isn't that neat? Very healthy. Yes it is. And a, and a more healthy nut as yes, we say. Yes, most certainly. Yep. Now the almonds. We'll sprinkle that on and then what we're going to do is we're going to cover this dish and once again put it in the refrigerator for a minimum of one hour but no more than 24. Okay. You know. 
So it's a, a prepared recipe. We want it to have time to kind of blend the flavors mm -hmm. of everything mm -hmm. for at least an hour and then you're ready to bake. And it's very quick and very easy, especially if you take advantage and do some stages like we did and do mm -hmm. your cubing ahead of time right. and some others. And of course, Barry, I want to show people by the miracle of TV. Don't we get love this up? Oh, we do. We have one that came right out of the oven and isn't that lovely? Oh, it's wonderful. It's yeah. just a beautiful dish, like mm -hmm. I said, for any kind of, of graduation brunch, graduation party, mm -hmm. a breakfast for bridesmaids. Mm -hmm. And speaking of oh, graduations, yes. I mean, we're getting ready to have a lot of those in May. Absolutely. And so yeah. uh, it's a wonderful dish to put on your list for those type of spring activities mm -hmm. that, that really would focus on more of a dessert brunch. Yeah. And it's well, really, looks, really good. So awesome. we hope you enjoy this. I think everybody will. And hey, if you want to try this at home, even using the mixer, which I'm not going to try, but uh, maybe my mom can do that for sure. me. Sure. But uh, we can get you the recipe. It's very mm -hmm. easy. You can email us, uh, email me actually, uh, barry.hyatt at nctc.com. That's one way. Or you can also email us at North Central directly. That will be on our website, actually. That's uh, www.nctc.com. We will make sure that the recipe is on our website as well. And it's really outside of the mixer for me it would be pretty easy uh, to make it's out. It's pretty thing. easy. It's definitely easy. And Barry, you know what we didn't show folks that we did just before we came on camera mm -hmm. is that we drizzle with a little honey. Okay. Instead of flooding it with a maple syrup of some type, right. a little honey, sprinkle a little powdered sugar, and you've got a great low calorie treat. And it's still going to taste sweet. It, it will be sweet. I yeah. guarantee that. And very good for you as well. Yes. Well, Janet, thanks so much for your time today. Great. And Glad we appreciate to be here. It. Yeah. And thank you guys so much for watching. Take care. We will see you again real soon and make this. It's going to be fantastic. I can guarantee you. Bye-bye.